Welcome to Reverb Roundtable, a weekly show that brings the brightest creative minds and digital producers in sports, entertainment, politics, news, and more to share their stories and strategies that will help you become a better leader and creator. This podcast is hosted by Clark Campbell, the founder and CEO of Reverb Agency, an event media production company where the goal is always to make great events look great online. On this episode, we are joined by Zachary Swartz, the Director of Creative Media for Ohio State Football, and Tyson Hutchins, the Senior Director of Creative Solutions for Clemson Athletics and Football. Both Zachary's and Tyson's social strategy strongly leans into student-athlete-based content, bringing their audience an inside look at what it's like to be a student-athlete at their university. This approach has been wildly successful for them, and we are going to dive into the ins and outs of how they do it and what they've learned along the way. Now onto this week's episode, here's your host, Clark Campbell. Yes, Tessa, I am so excited about this particular conversation because we have a little bias towards the Southeastern Conference because we do a ton of work with the Southeastern Conference and we have a ton of fun. And if, if you know college sports at all, you probably know that there's always this competitive conversation and tension if you talk to someone in the other conference uh, or other conferences. And so I'm excited to have um, two thought leaders, um, experts, uh, people that are just paving the way uh, in, in college sports and in sports in general when it comes to digital. Uh, Tyson, who's over at Clemson in the ACC, and Zach, who is at Ohio State, I don't even want to say the conference because you know I just it's just it's too hard to admit it. Um, John and John's co-hosting today, so good to have you with us too, John. John's going to lead a lot of these conversations because I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. <laughs> Let's start with Tyson. Tyson at Clemson University. Tyson, what's up? Tell us a little bit about what you do day to day, in particular during uh, the biggest seasons of the year. Maybe we lean into college football. Tyson, what's up, man? How's it going? I'm excited to be Great. here. I appreciate y'all uh, y'all having me on. Yeah, a little bit about me. So I'm the Senior Director of Creative Solutions here at Clemson. Um, so what that means in a larger scale, the primary, the primary focus of what I do is managing and overseeing all of the content that comes out of our Clemson football social media accounts and kind of managing the brand of Clemson football. And that's a significant part of, of what I do on kind of a day to day, obviously, with with the, the scale and magnitude of, of our uh, team. It's a it's a very significant part of my job. And then as well, um, I, I oversee a lot of the creative video for the athletic department as a whole um, and just being a resource for a lot of folks there, emerging technologies and kind of some of those things that that work across all of athletics. But. But that's it in a nutshell. A lot of uh, a lot of digital strategy and creative video um, directed at football, and then being a resource to all of our Olympic sports as we can. Awesome, Zach. You what's what's up? Are you producing kind of similar roles as Tyson? Yeah, definitely. And, and again, echo his sentiment. You know, really, really happy to be here. Excited to talk. Uh, definitely have a ton of respect for Tyson and what they do there. Always have. Um, but, you know, for me, the, the role is really similar. Uh, I think what, you know, what is is a little different is we are 100% football. Uh, I know that's mm. that's a lot of what, what they're doing. But, you know, my direct report is our director of recruiting. So everything we do, you know, ultimately does come down to um, have, it has to have, you know, a, a recruiting focus. And that's the reason why we have access and, and really jobs in general and, and the resources that we do. So my day-to-day role is really um, – you know, more of an oversight role. Uh, we are involved uh, heavily in recruiting. Uh, you know, that includes producing content as well as, uh, you know, meeting with recruits and, and you know, pitching them on, on how we can help them get to the next level. Uh, we do a lot of motivational leadership stuff with the, the current team as well. And then, you know, the vast majority of probably what we do is, is surrounding social media and, and strategy and, um, and that. And um, it all kind of intertwines and connects. But for the most part, um, you know, my job is to is to oversee, um, but I'm also, you know, doing doing some production still um, on that leadership, motivational, internal side, um, as well as you know, helping out with social media for bigger projects. That's awesome. Um, well, guys, we're we're super psyched to have you here on the show, and just super. Uh, I am super excited just to to listen to what you guys have to say. And I know you bring a lot of knowledge to the table as far as this whole conversation around sports. Um, so obviously, you know, you guys are like 
leadership of a team, right? You know, you, you're, you're directing creatives a lot of the time. Can you kind of talk, uh, maybe break down a little bit about that team that you work with? Um, you know, who, who are you directing? Let's go with Zach first. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're really lucky. I have, um, our team has kind of grown over the years, uh, but right now, so right now we are a, a four person team within football uh, we are act, we are about to hire a uh, fifth uh, fifth position uh, come this July. It was actually a position that existed uh, earlier before the pandemic hit. Both of my assistant video directors left for uh, for other jobs, and so oh, no. during the pandemic, we were you know we we were able to get one of those back, and then now we're you know finally getting back to full strength. So uh, we have we will have by the end of this year uh, five full time people on staff, including myself, uh, two assistant, and that's just for football, just for just football. For, Yes, sir. Just for football. Very lucky to have that, um, you know, two assistant video um, people that, you know, help with both social media and some of the internal stuff we do. And then we have two graphic design positions, uh, one which really oversees strategy as well with me um, and all the external graphics and everything that you see out there. And then our second graphic designer handles all the uh, kind of the uh, recruiting materials that are sent out to all the recruits. And then also really uh, kind of manages our photography as well. He's been really interested in that, and uh, we've put a big emphasis on that. So that's that's what our team is at the moment. Yeah, for for us, we're we're structured similarly, but also different in some ways. And so we're primarily focused on the external facing uh, brand of Clemson and Clemson football specifically. And so for our group, we have a we have a group of full time of four full time individuals. Um, my boss, the assistant athletic director or associate athletic director of creative solutions, um, Jonathan Gant, myself, the senior director of creative solutions. And then we have two associate directors, one on the video side, one on the graphics side. Um, and like, uh, Zach, we have some, some current empty positions, uh, that, that we're hoping to, to fill at some point, uh, due to the pandemic and some things like that. And then, uh, we here at Clemson, we, we have a, a really strong, uh, student workforce. Um, we are a certified internship provider for our, a lot of the majors on campus, um, and so we have uh, two to three graf- or graduate assistant positions and then anywhere from seven to ten students at any time. And so um, usually we take a, a, a few of those students and dedicate them to football and then the remainder of the students we spread aco- across the other uh, creative projects we have within athletics as a whole. So that's kind of the overview of our department. That's that's helpful, and I love hearing about the student element of this. Um, our team really has come out of recruiting students from a local university. That's almost what John ninety five percent, maybe ninety percent of our team came yeah. out of one communications department at a small D two school in Tennessee. But um, that's that's awesome um, that 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 you guys are. <clears throat> leaning into that. Um, and, and if you're listening and you want to apply for a job, you know, they, there's some job openings uh, unless they hire in the next couple of days before this, this airs. So one of the things I had to learn in our work with the SEC was this tension between creating content and strategies that get the broader million plus fans out in the Southeast to engage the content versus the SEC exists to serve the students, the student athletes, the schools, the staff, like they kind of have this internal mission to serve them. How, but you guys are really working hard to incorporate the players into your strategies how, what's that tension like? Before you tell me what you do with students, are, are you trying to create content that reaches the masses and engages the masses, the, the fan base of, of each conference that you're working for? Or are you leaning into the student athletes, the schools? What are you doing from a strategic position as far as who is your character you're trying to reach with your content? This is a great question. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it first. I, we have a slide that we uh, usually use and it's like the, the typical like group of circles that is your audience. And that largest circle for us is recruits. Um, And, and what we've found is um, if a recruit likes what we're creating, most of our fan base is going to, is going to like it as well. Uh, Very, very rarely does 
does that, uh, you call it attention, but rarely do we view it as attention or have sure. that tension. Um, and on top of that, when we're focused on recruiting, we're going to get better recruits. Hopefully that'll be an element of what we can offer a student athlete and then hopefully win more games, which is going to make mm-hmm. all of our fans happy. And so um, that's kind of our approach that we focus on the recruits. Um, and it seems that everything kind of falls in place after that with our fan base. That's not to say at times we no. don't create things to drive season ticket sales or things like sure, that, sure. but just from an overall strategy standpoint, that's kind of how we tackle it. And you bring it, you, you clarify it for me a little bit where you are, you're not performing necessarily for an entire conference. Um, you're performing for Clemson. You're trying to drive recruits to Clemson, whereas in the SEC might be trying to drive recruits to all 12 schools. So there is a little bit of a difference there, but that's still helpful. Um, uh, Zach, where are you at when it comes to who is your central character that you're trying to, is it, is it recruits just like Tyson? It is. Yeah. And that's, you know, he definitely speaks. We, we definitely talk about it in a very similar way. You know, there's, there's different pieces of content that are for different people. Um, you know, and, and like he said, anything that we put out, um, for that's going to appeal to recruit, you know, 99% of the time it's going to appeal to a fan base. You know, we've, when I first started here, uh, it was, it was 2016 and, and really my job at that point and our job was to create content for recruits. That, that is the reason we really weren't, mm. If we were going to spend the time to make a video, you know, produce a piece, um, we had to, you know, ideally be able to show how is this particular piece going to appeal to a recruit. That was, that was what our mindset was. And if it wasn't, if it was only going to appeal to the fan base or, mm-hmm. um, you know, that really wasn't our job. We have a digital media team that, that is meant to sell tickets and that is meant to appeal to the fan base. Our job was to appeal to recruits. And as... Uh, name image likeness has kind of come down the line and, and the future we're, you know, we're, we've really looked overall at kind of the philosophy of, you know, is this one video that I produce going to make a huge impact on this recruit's decision? You know, individually, mm-hmm. maybe not, you know, over, over time that, that brand that we build is. And so for us, that's a big part of our philosophy of, of kind of looking long-term and beyond each individual piece. And then the mm-hmm. other strategy is we, you know, as name image likeness comes, social strategy is, is even more important. We want to be able to show recruits and our current student athletes that we can help them grow their individual platforms as well. Yep. Yep. Um, and so that, what that has done for us is we have done more fan facing um, pieces, uh, low hanging fruit pieces, stuff that will appeal to, you know, the, the fan base maybe equally or more to than, than a single recruit, but that's part of a long kind of a longer vision of if we can show that the Ohio state social media brand is, is powerful and, and that we can grow that, then, then that also has an impact on, on recruits decisions to want to come here. I think it's super cool that, you know, even, even when we're working outside of the sports world, um, if we're trying to market someone, if we're trying to market a client, our goal, our, our first goal is to define our audience and to, you know, figure out who are we trying to get this to appeal to, whether it's a photo, a graphic, a video. Um, and so it, it's super cool to hear you guys talk about you you go through the same exact process right you've defined your audience you know who it is and it might be different for one piece of content you know like you talk about the low-hanging fruit and it might be different for another piece of content um you talked a little bit when you were defining uh your teams you talked a little bit about like graphics uh and video teams what kind of what's the process deciding what piece needs to be a graphic what piece needs to be a video um, and, you know, how, how does that go from an idea to actually ending up, whether it's on your Instagram grid or Twitter feed or wherever it goes out? Uh, wh- what is that whole process like? You know, I, I'll just speak for us. You know, we um, I've been really lucky to have uh, a, you know, our, our, our lead design um, person on our team. Um, both of the, the individuals that have worked with me, Sam Silverman and, and Chris Arizopoulos, have really good uh, overall perspectives. They don't see themselves as a designer by uh, on its own. They see themselves as a marketer and understand how to, as a social media expert. And so for us, you know, we are located in the same office. We have an edit, you know, a suite where we're all in there. And so for us, it's a, it's a, it's a really easy conversation for us to bounce ideas back and forth. And, and, you know, there may, there really isn't necessarily a specific process of this should be a graphic or this should be a video. If, if I'm the video guy and I come up with an idea, um, you know, I may go ahead and execute it. Now we're going to bounce those ideas off, but a lot of times, you know, I try to, we try to put the, 
um, you know, put the emphasis on people. If you have an idea, you know, go execute it. And, and yeah, maybe it'll work, you know, maybe it'll work better as a, gra- as a graphic or as a photo. We have those conversations, but there's not necessarily a specific conversation, a specific go-to bullet point that we say, okay, this needs to be that it's, it's on a case by case basis. And it's, it's about the collaboration and kind of the overall thinking of, you know, I, you know, I have a video back. I have a video background. My other guys may have a graphic background, but let's all try to have this, have a broader mindset and try to figure out, you know, what would work best for each piece. Yeah. I, I think for us, uh, Zach, Zach nails it right on the head. Like it's, there's, there's so much quantity and need to be in front of recruits regularly and in front of a fan base regularly that, that for us, we, we focus on, uh, our goal is to tell the story of what it's like to be a Clemson tiger. Our coaches back in the day, they used to say, you know, if we could just get people to Clemson, like upstate South Carolina is not the easiest place to get to. You usually have to take a connecting flight and drive a little bit and it's not the easiest place. Uh, And so there used to be this saying of like, if we could just get people to come to Clemson, like we, we'd be able to, to get a lot, a lot more recruits and build the fan base and all this stuff. And so our goal is to answer that question of what it's like to be a Clemson Tiger, what Clemson is like and all those things and take it to people, um, mm-hmm. specifically recruits and our fan base and different things like that. And so uh, to Zach's point, uh, we don't give it that much thought or strategic kind of graphic versus video. As long as it's answering that question, we're, we're, we'll probably put it out. And yeah, we'll be a little strategic of like, maybe we have a little more emphasis on photos on Instagram than we do on Twitter or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, but all of that is a, a minor nuance compared to as long as we're answering that question of what it's like to be a Clemson Tiger. I love that for so many reasons. And I'm going to take that access. I think what you're selling is Access leads to conversion, right? Getting closer to the product leads to purchasing the product for a recruit. So when it comes to digital, um, one thing I've seen personally across industries, not just sports, not just conferences, not just faith-based organizations, but the more we give access to the inside look at what's happening behind the scenes or on the field, the better the content performs. So does that play into how you are leveraging content um, the give and take between your student athlete creating content or sharing your content that you're creating, like how are you leveraging or uh, leaning into maybe is a better word, uh, better phrase your your relationship with student athletes to meet those objectives of access leads to conversion. I don't know if I'm asking it the right way, um, but how do you lean into the the student athlete content? Is it is it you push it or you pull it from them? Talk to me about that, Tyson. Go. Ah, man, that's a good. It's a good question. And uh, Zach hit the buzzword early of NIL, right? Name, image, and yeah. likeness. If you're not familiar with it, uh, in in the future, in the coming mm-hmm. weeks and months, uh, collegiate student athletes are going to be able to monetize their yep. name, image, and likeness, which they which yep. they previously have not been able to do. Obviously, that's a that's a major change for mm-hmm. for us and and our roles and. I've talked to Zach and his staff offline. Like it, it, it's a it's a change. We're we're yeah. used to promoting Clemson football, or in Zach's case, mm-hmm. Ohio State football, as a brand, and that mm-hmm. that's one brand that that you that you need to push. And now all of a sudden, we're going okay. We're gonna we're gonna push a hundred plus brands <laughs> or whoever wants to. And and so the the way and full disclosure, we haven't figured it all out yet, okay. but. Uh, we are trying to identify it as uh, our student athletes are an extension of Clemson. Um, mm-hmm. We had the one of the number one recruits in the country, DJ Uyengalale. Uh, he is from California. California mm-hmm. is a long way from Clemson, South Carolina. And so mm-hmm. when we provide content and access to DJ um, and he's able to promote the Clemson brand, he's hitting an audience that probably – knows very little about about right. Clemson and so mm-hmm. we see that as an advantage to mm-hmm. us that that you know those those student athletes are an extension of the Clemson brand and by doing that they also have the ability to grow their own brand which we care about a lot as well um, and and so 
it's uh, that's kind of our initial mindset of how how we're looking at it, and I'm sure it will evolve over time. But but at the moment, that's that's how we see it. We see them as a extension of the brand of Clemson football, um, and how we can help them grow their brand by uh, a mutually beneficial relationship. I want to throw in uh, like an asterisk to this question because I want you to answer it and then um, have Zach answer it. Like when it comes to you creating content and then getting it to players to share or student athletes to share, how easy of a task is that? Have you had to build certain relationships or, or, or even certain platforms like Google drive links that you, how do you uh, engage the players on sharing content or using content that you've created? Yeah, you bet. Uh, what you just mentioned, that's a whole business in and of itself. Uh, yep. That's that's become a thriving, uh, hot topic among uh, our, our yeah. field. Because to my point, uh, we're used to focusing on one brand and all of a sudden we're mm-hmm. figuring out how we distribute content across, uh, f- if you include the entire athletic department, 500 plus athletes, yeah. right? Yeah. And so uh, there are a number of companies who are in the business. At Clemson, we've chosen to partner with Open Doors. Um, it's a company yeah. out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah. Um, and they specialize in content distribution as well as uh, name, image, and likeness education. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they have some additional tools coming down the pipeline. And we've chose to partner with them as kind of our name, gotcha. image, and likeness partner. Um, and so for us currently, uh, we capture content practices, workouts, games, obviously, all of those scenarios. Um, and then we use Open Doors, which is essentially uh, a, a more custom Google Drive link mm-hmm. of sorts where we can tag players and different things. Um, and we distribute content that way. And so for us, um, that that's kind of the route that we've gone down. Um, and, and there's nuances to that of, you know, when we create uh, videos for for players versus the, just distributing photos and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're actively working on the best uh, processes of how we can how we can go about that. Love it. Thanks for sharing the open doors. Uh, that's we'll put it in the show notes too. Zach, tell us about what you how you guys approach this. Yeah, that's like Tyson said. That is a huge, huge, huge topic of conversation. Um, a Obviously, a lot of schools have uh, have partnered with uh, some of these companies. Open Doors, Influencer, are probably the two most popular ones right now. I think, um, although there are, are there are a lot of other ones out there um, right now. So we are not uh, we do not have a partnership in place. We uh, have been kind of um, I know our administration and just our athletic department has kind of been waiting for a lot of these. Uh, outstanding issues to pass surrounding name image likeness before they make a final decision. Uh, we are in the process right now of figuring out what that partner is. So we will have that um, hopefully, you know, done actually here in the next few weeks or months. Um, once uh, kind of all the, the uh, T's are crossed and I's are dotted. But so in the meantime, we're kind of a little antiquated as far as the sharing system we have through the university. Um, uh, it's it's an app called Box. It's just like Dropbox, uh, and it's through the Ohio State University. Every student athlete has an account through their OSU account uh, when they get here. We have purchased a photo tagging software, uh, organize, uh, kind of a, an easy way for us to tag and organize photos on our end. And we're we're physically dragging and dropping those photos in those you know in those box folders for the guys after games, after practices, after workouts. Um, to make sure that they have that. Um, so it's a little more antiquated. I know um, a lot of those services, you know, it's not as, it's not only distributing the content, but those services are actually sending links to guys to even, you know, tweet and post their Instagram directly, you know, from, you know, simply as click, click, uh, clicking a button. It obviously will track the, uh, the engagement and, and numbers as well. And so long-term we are, we are trying to get on board with that as well, but you know, from the student athlete perspective, I've talked to these companies and they, they always ask how, are, how do you, plan on convincing a student athlete to use this and at least you know just speaking on behalf of us like our student athletes are begging us for stuff constantly if their photos aren't updated immediately after the practice like yeah i'm like that's not an issue like that is not an issue (laughs) the (laughs) issue is how do we get it to them fast enough and so sure um i think at, at places like clemson and ohio state where they are used to having cameras in front of them and and the resources where mm-hmm. they everything is documented and they've been having it mm-hmm. since they were freshmen um that's not an issue and so 
you know, we have, our guys are definitely very bought into our philosophy and want to, uh, it's safe to say they want to have content to share. <laughs> All right, Zach, I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, can you talk to me as if I was a five-year-old and explain <laughs> NFT and what is, what is going on in the world of NFT? No, I can't because I'm still like a six year old. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll give all the credit, honestly, with NFTs to my to my partner, uh, Chris Harrisopoulos. And he's taught me a lot. So I feel like I have maybe a, an average understanding of what it is. But from the from the very basic uh, standpoint is an NFT is, is any it really is anything you can apply, um, you know, this to anything. It can be a physical object. It can be a digital object. But obviously, I think the most popular items right now are applying you know, applying this to digital objects. So, uh, the easy example is, uh, is, you know, NBA top shot. So this is, this is a you know, piece of content. This is an asset that the NBA owns. It's video that they own and they're selling a piece of digital content, um, like a trading card. And mm-hmm. a lot of the value, some of the value and in, in all this stuff is in collecting that people really are interested in owning it. But I think the real value is that, it is new and it's kind of just like the stock market. They, they don't necessarily want that clip of Blake Griffin dunking over a Kia because they want to have it and show it off. They want it because they can resell it for potentially mm. 10 times the amount soon. Mm. And so it's, it's really not that difficult of a concept when you think about things that already exist, trading cards and things like that. But right. the future of NFTs is what's very interesting. You know, there are a lot of, there's a lot of utility you can add in, you know, you can apply, you know, an NFT to a digital ticket and give, you know, give someone who, who buys that an extra experience on the field. You know, there's, it's literally limitless, I think, of what NFTs will provide. And it's like every day I'm in a group text with, with some people and they're always sending links of this, this athletes get involved in this, this, you know, I saw just today that uh, I think Tops finally launched their, um, their plan for kind of to rival NBA Top Shots wow. and things. So, it is a it is a booming industry. I don't think it's going away. I think nope, some of it will change, but it's uh it's definitely interesting to see how we can go about doing that. Yeah. Tyson, anything on your end? Are you guys exploring this or do you have to plead the fifth? Like like what's <laughs> what's going on? Or what's in your heart? What do you uh, want to what would you love to see happen? That's a that's a good question. Uh I won't plead the fifth, uh, but but I will say it's something that we are actively <laughs> pursuing. <laughs> Whoops, sorry, my app watch is going <laughs> off. Uh, it, it, it is uh, part, of, part of our job. Uh, our department here at Clemson is called Creative Solutions, and we make that mm-hmm. quite literally. Uh, <laughs> anything that needs a creative solution, we are kind of the source for that. And, and so mm-hmm. that goes into emerging technologies and how we can utilize mm-hmm. those things. And, and Zach mentioned it, but, but there's questions that we have of, you know, how it seems likely that this would affect ticketing or, Mm -hmm. you know, experiences Mm -hmm. and obviously the collectibles, that's kind of where it, where it sits now. But um, yeah, we are, we're actively engaged in trying to figure out how that could be utilized and and paying close attention to anything that makes a splash in that, that type of way. uh, We're Mm going to be paying attention to, to what, what type of impact it could have on, on us and our fans. I want to pull our focus uh, back to the content a little bit and kind of shift the conversation that way. So in sports, and so our thing at Reverb is real-time events, right? We we go and we we flip content in really quick amounts, uh, or really just quick timelines. Um, with sports, it's a whole different beast uh, for a couple different reasons, right? Because people in sports are used to you know live broadcasts, and so they're already expecting it to be real-time. Uh, now I have to like, I have to go and edit this video and get it out, you know, within an hour at least no, to really make minutes, it relevant. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Clark and I go back and forth on that. <laughs> um, but also the other part of the beast is I can go and I can work at conference and I kind of know the story that I'm going to tell from the very get go. But you don't know the story that you're going to tell with with a football game until, you know, sometimes the buzzer sounds at the end of the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, we worked the SEC championship and it was Alabama versus Florida. And I, I'm sure you guys paid attention to it. Like it was a high scoring game and it was kind of neck and neck the mm-hmm. entire game. And I'm editing this video as the game's going <laughs> on. And just like, I don't know how I'm supposed to close off this story because <laughs> like we got to get this video out quick. 
but I, I don't know the ending to the story. Can you guys talk a little bit about just the beast that is real time content in the sports world? Uh, Tyson, you want to go first? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say, uh, the same business that you're in, that's kind of where Clemson like left its mark to start. Mm. I mean, we, we are very much in the quick turn, uh, business of live coverage Mm. and offering a very unique view of, of a sporting event. That's, that's kind of my, I, I would venture to say my boss, Jonathan Gant, uh, kind of pioneered like, that mm-hmm. type of coverage and that type of quick turn content, especially in sports. And, you know, it's unique uh, now where uh, I kind of think about it in two different, in two different ways uh, uh, to use a baseball analogy. Like we need to get on base every single day, every mm-hmm. single event. We're going to be there. We're going to cover it. We're going to make sure that content is turned quickly we're going to make sure that, that we get on base every day um, and that we're covering workouts and all of those things that happen on a daily basis. Um, but then at times we need to be prepared to like hit a home run to like mm-hmm. dig in. And so, mm-hmm. so we're kind of split into two different, like at times we're a creative agency with creative mm-hmm. briefs and storyboards and things like that. And then at times we're a, a media entity that's like live covering events. Mm -hmm. And so um, from a workflow standpoint, we kind of have the game day coverage thing. We, we have the formula down. I I, I feel confident saying that where uh, we have shooters on the field, we have editors where, you know, uh, sequences are pre-built and ready to have like clips dropped into. Maybe there's a storyline that we're prepared to tell um, in a very fast manner. And so, we have that aspect of the business and then we have the aspect of trying to hit home runs where, you know, we're, we're uh, hopefully going to have the number one overall draft pick. So we're going to plan for that and have some, have some creative strategy built for that. And so uh, for us, I kind of see it in those, those two different, those two different uh, ballparks that we, we try and operate in at all times. So that's kind of our vision of it. Um, we get, we got to make sure we get on base, but, but we're going to try and hit I love those that. Home runs when the time mm-hmm. comes. Zach. Yeah, for us. So, so we, and all the big 10 schools are in a unique position compared to a lot of conferences. And the fact that in game, we're not allowed to post any video um, at all on our yep. social media. Yep. Ah, the joys. You want to get yes. into the rights conversation? <laughs> yeah, we, we, can, well, that's we can get into media rights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we tried to get away with it a long, you know, years ago, but eventually we kind of had to That's really like, figure out how to do it. And so from a mm-hmm. live, a live, you know, game day, the way we cover it, we invested heavily in photography. Um, we've always kind of done it, but this past year, we really, uh, luckily we have uh, our designer, uh, Corey Wonderly on our staff is very interested in photography. And so we invested some money in some equipment um, and, and made sure that we are, so our number one goal during our live coverage from kickoff to the end of the game is, is, is all photo based and graphic based. And so we have a strategy for how we uh, are sharing that um, ever evolving. And so for us, it's maybe a little easier. We are editing, you know, editing our photos and making sure that we're still putting out quality content. Um, And then pregame before the window opens of of where the rights are owned, we're making sure that we are putting some live content out. We'll, we'll do an arrival video, you know, for big games. That's, that's a, pre-produced piece similar like Tyson said we'll have the music down and where the cuts go and, and put something out then uh, we have kind of moments leading up to a game it was obviously different with no fans you know there weren't as much there's not as much fanfare but we, we will put out video pre-game we, we put a lot of our video emphasis on pre-game and then post event um, you know locker room access that's where we're putting out more raw clips maybe you know a, a single shot of a great play from the game and we, we've mostly decided uh, partially for our staff's mental health since we're working crazy game day uh, or crazy hours during the week. We actually have said, you know, on a Saturday, um, you know, we're putting out a lot of photos throughout the game, a lot of graphics. We want to put out a lot leading up to the game. But then after the game, a lot of the fans are watching other football games. They're out there. So we actually want to put out raw content uh, and then let it breathe a little bit. You know, we'll put out graphics yeah. and photos and then, 
um, kind of come back on Sunday and put out more content and then put together kind of a nice edited piece with, with the stuff that we shot later in the week to kind of bring people's eyeballs back to the game. And then, mm -hmm. um, so we're, we are actually a little less, um, on, we need to get this out right now because we sure. want eyeballs on our stuff. And so, uh, it's a little bit of a mix of, yeah, mental health and giving our guys a break on Saturday nights to get ready for the week, <laughs> uh, and able to put out still really good content throughout the week that still will get seen. Um, but a lot of our focus on live events is, is through, you know, raw content, which, um, I think I didn't love as a video producer early on. I wish that we can produce really good stuff all the time, but the way of the world and what our strategy is, a lot of times that's the stuff that obviously is going to perform better than, than even an sure. edited piece. So. Yeah. Not, not to belabor the point, but come, I know Zach and I both come from like a purist video creator background <laughs> uh -oh. and with, uh -oh. with that, but I'm about to, with that said, uh, it's wild to see how the platforms have changed and, and audiences appetite for things. And so to Zach's point, uh, there was a time in 2015, 2016, 2017, where we would put out 10 20 produced pieces from a game day mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. dslr like really yep. awesome cut to music type things and in 2020 2021 like there's an appetite for some of that but mm -hmm. with the way the platforms function and different things like a lot of times they'll take the cell phone angle like they mm -hmm. want that like uh i i recently did like a state of the program type of report um, and looked in three of our top 10 performing pieces from this past year was from my cell phone, from my camera wow. roll directly onto the platform. Like those were wow. our best performing pieces and, and like top, top two performing things were that. And so, um, we're really starting to try to just be a little more strategic to, to Zach's point. Like we can produce really high quality stuff, but do we need to? Is it the yeah. right time for it? Uh, a lot of the platforms don't reward timeliness in the way that they used to. Um, yep. And so uh, we're, we're thinking differently about, about how yeah. about things. And, and uh, you got to be there. People have their phones on them when they're mm -hmm. watching a game or when the game ends. But, but we are thinking differently about uh, the life of content and how we mm -hmm. should be more strategic of when, when it comes out and, and when's, when fans and recruits can, can expect it. Oh my so, gosh. Nice. Uh, oh my I, gosh. I'm really, I'm really getting down the rabbit hole. No, but, uh, I know yeah, those are things can. Zach's thinking about and, and we are as well. And, and just kind of the future of where things are going. I, I think, there's a time and a place for the photos and a time and a place for the graphics. And there's a time and a place for, for the, uh, the, the 4k 60 out of my iPhone here. And yep. so like uh, we're trying to do all of it and be really strategic with what we do. I'm I think really it, grateful that you brought that up Tyson, but go ahead, John. Well, I think, I think it's, it's really important to everything that you just said is so good. It's the conversation of like form versus content, or you could say like technique versus story, right? I can edit and color grade this, this gorgeous video, but if the story's not there, if, if, if people can't tell what's going on, or if it's just not interesting, like it doesn't matter how beautiful the shot is, like it, it's, it's not going to connect with your audience. Mm -hmm. um, so I really appreciate everything that you're saying there. Yeah. All right. So yeah, Clark, go ahead. Yes, okay, I mean. so because your time is valuable, um, and I'm very, I'm very, uh, oh, I don't know the word to use, not jealous of your time. I, I want to sit with you guys like for four hours to talk. <laughs> like, I just feel like there's so much here that we could unpack. And maybe when we host our next real time summit, drop that in there, uh, maybe we can have you guys in person uh, when we have that. We're going to get regather. So, kind of what we do almost came out of, of an event we hosted in 2018 called the Real Time Summit. And uh, we maybe we'll go back to that. But I have three questions because I, 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 we really value your time and we know you have a lot going on. They're fairly short questions. Um, and I'm going to read them real quick and then I'm going to go back and ask you to answer them. Number one is what's the single biggest hurdle or challenge you're facing when it comes to quality or speed? Is it lack of team? Is it lack of resources? Is it the different platforms? I don't know what it is. Biggest hurdle you're facing when it comes to quality and speed. Second question is, what should creative teams stop doing in 2021 in sports? 
And the last question is, what should creative teams start doing in 2021 when it comes to sports? So hopefully not long answers, just like maybe a sentence on uh, each one. So let's kind of jump back and forth. And I'm going to rapid fire here. Let's go with Zach. Biggest hurdle or challenge you're facing when it comes to quality and speed? Biggest hurdle with quality and speed is always going to be resources, both human and um, and equipment. No matter what you have, they're always gonna, they're always going to want more. It's never going to be enough, and so it's keeping up with the appetite of of what people want, but also knowing what our what our resources are and what we're limited to, and and making sure that we're capitalizing, doing the best we can with what we have, which is great compared to a lot of places. But yep. uh, it's continuing with that knowledge that it will never be enough and, and understanding that as well. We get it. Tyson, biggest challenge you're facing right now? Uh, biggest challenge is what Zach said. Uh, we mm-hmm. don't have enough resources. But since he already said that, we'll never have enough resources. What, whatever yep. we have, we always will need more. <laughs> but since he already said that, uh, I'll say um, technology. Uh, mm-hmm. I think there there's a lot of room for emerging technology of – how we capture content, how it's ingested, how yep. it's tagged, how all of those things. Uh, there are massive opportunities for emerging technology to transform a lot of what we do. Um, and so I'll, I'll tack on uh, technology yep. to, to Zach's answer. It's fantastic. And make sure you go watch Tyson's YouTube channel. He's got some really practical tips. Uh, I even learned something. I, I should. Um, well, if you're going to, I got to go and upload more. If you're upload <laughs> I think you had one from channel. March. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, I did. I got to, I got to, I, I like that stuff, but I got to be better about yeah. it if we're going to plug it on the pod here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was good. You keep doing more of it. Okay. Right back at you, Tyson. What should creative teams in the sports world, what should they stop doing? You look at Twitter and you're like, oh gosh, another one of those videos. Um, what what should people stop doing? Um, Don't throw anybody under the bus is, per se. But. This isn't Twitter, <laughs> uh, but this is Instagram. Um, okay. You, you got to the aesthetic like no one cares like <laughs> like we like folks like us on this yeah. we're the only ones no yep, no one else right. cares you're they right. do not care about the aesthetic of the the feed and the the, yep. the way your instagram if you want to have a little campaign for like a few posts or whatever yeah. So, yeah, yeah, great yeah, yeah. but the overall aesthetic man like Focus on the actual content, on being strategic with it, and don't don't worry about the aesthetic. No one, no one's gonna know that like that wasn't perfect Clemson orange. Mm-hmm. Like I want I some <laughs> friends that I have some friends that but, are gonna hate you. I, uh, I, they are not gonna like you. I, I and I'm <laughs> be honest. I I I was a purist. I I was mm-hmm. that guy. But if we're gonna live in this social world, you gotta recognize reality. So that is what it is. So true. Yeah, Zach. Uh, 1,000. Couldn't agree with that more than 1,000%. Uh, I tell everybody aesthetic of Instagram, overrated. Yep. Um, for me, uh, and this kind of is directed, I think, towards just more people in our industry is stop making content um, to impress other content creators. Um, Ooh. Mm. Focus on your audience. Make good pieces of content for that your audience will enjoy. That's good. And that's your job. Um, it's good. Usually that will impress other content creators, but that's not your job. I know, I know everybody wants to get the next job. Um, uh, but if you're focusing on what the audience is, that's going to make you have a bigger picture of what you're actually doing. And to me, that is a much, if I'm going to hire somebody down the line, I mm-hmm. want somebody that is going to put all their effort into what the audience is, what the content should be for the audience, not because they want it to. Such a good creative ego, man. It's a big thing. Retweet. Yep. Good, good stuff. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's stick with Zach since we're there. Last question uh, before I wrap this a little bit. Um, what should creative teams start doing in sports um, this, this year? Um, we've kind of already talked about it, but I, I'll just say focus on efficiency um, mm. and strategy. Know what your resources are. Don't try to be somebody else. Understand what your resources are. Understand that Clemson and Ohio State are going to have more resources than a lot of other places. 
your videos, your pieces of content don't need to look like anybody else's. Um, figure out the most efficient and productive way um, to do your work with what, what you have. Uh, and if you're applying it to what your audience is, they're going to love it. Um, stop trying to, it's kind of similar. Stop trying to, you know, compare, uh, focus on what your realm is. Um, and then also look outside of sports for inspiration. I'll just leave it with that. You know, That's don't good. copy what other people in sports are doing. That's Find good. something outside of sports to help make you stand out. That's great. Tyson. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't pick just one. So I got two things. Uh, Go one, uh, Man, uh, I'm going to make a lot of enemies on this, but there's always this conversation of quality over quantity, mm. and that is uh, – if we're, if we're talking about social media, that is a terrible strategy. It's a mm. really bad strategy. The goal should be scalable quality. That's what mm. I always say is like That's if good. you're not regularly in people's feeds – then you're not being seen. You're not growing right. your brand. And so you can drop the sickest hype video once a month yep. and like you'll be in people's feeds for a couple days. But like if you're not regularly in people's feeds with qual, I'm not saying you post bad content, yeah. but if we're in this social media world, we want scalable quality. That's what That's what I always say where we can consistently post really good stuff and then we're going to try to go back to my analogy. We're going to try and hit the home run. We're going to make sure that mm -hmm. we do that. But but we got to be regularly in people's feeds to build the brand that, mm -hmm. that we're trying to. Mm -hmm. um, and so number two, uh, that is a huge aspect of it. And now I can't remember number two. I got way too <laughs> animated about, about that one. But but we'll if you we'll stick with that. We'll if you think that. of it, jump back in, and I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this with. Um, something that may sound like I'm asking for a compliment, but I'm actually wanting to unpack something we did at the SEC at basketball this year, which was completely out of the box, if, you'll, if you will, for SEC. And I want to tell you why we did it and just get your real quick sense on, hey, good idea, risky idea, can't do too much of it, that kind of thing. Um, so, Zach, I have no idea if you saw it. Tyson, I, I think you did with Sammy. We asked Sammy right before we got to the SEC is, hey, we don't want a sideline reporter for the content. We want a guide. We want someone to take the fans real quickly, even if it's five or 10 seconds into a piece of content that doesn't feel like sideline sideline reporter. We wanted, and here's the reason, there's a strategic reason why I pushed for it. When you look at the SEC, you've got 12 teams, 12 different groups, fans, every piece of content you put out is irrelevant to 11 other teams, uh, 11 other fan bases. And so what could we do in the first couple of seconds of each piece of content where we're having to create all these game recaps that might keep 10 or 11 of those other fan bases or other student athlete groups engaged a little longer into that content? And so I said, Sammy, can we stick you or someone at the front just to kind of lean into the moment maybe people will watch a few more seconds that will, and then they'll stick around because they didn't just see Alabama playing uh, Tennessee and uh, it's irrelevant. I'm out. I'm gone. I don't want to watch this. That's why we did it. Do you think it works sticking that guide into the beginning of content, especially when you're having to do a lot of content at a tournament? Um, or is it like, Hey, be careful with it. Don't use it too much. I'm kind of leaving it open-ended, but I want you to throw darts at, the strategy and tell us where we should go moving forward or how we should kind of talk to Sammy about it. Zach, I'll let you go first. What, are, what were your thoughts? So, so your question is, is kind of having a physical person on, on camera guiding you through the. the guiding process. you into the content. Yeah. It's, it's like a, a host or a guide with some of your content. Do you do it? Does it work? Um, I think, I think it does. I think it can, uh, but it can't look like news. Um, I think yeah, that's, exactly. um, you know, and I think you guys definitely address that with your strategy. And honestly, I think it has to go, it, it really depends on the personality of the person. Um, I think yeah. there is a place for it. The most important thing we do is we want, we want people to live in the moment and feel like they're in the moment. And so I, I think the most important thing is having the, um, 
the student athletes tell talk fluidly and not feel like we're putting words in their mouths. And so mm -hmm. I think to me, that's the most important thing, but, I, but I don't see a problem with if you have a good host with a good personality that makes it feel not like news. I think there's definitely a place for yeah. that. Cool. And yeah. I'll say this. We use Sammy because LeBron James and John legend, were a little busy doing something else <laughs> for Ohio state. So <laughs> <laughs> that is true. We, uh, I need some, I need some big name, big name fans like Zach's got to work with. We, we could really use, we could really Hilarious. use that here in Clemson. But, uh, uh, no, it's a great question. Uh, we at Clemson lean into that a lot. So we, we kind of have a, a cornerstone piece of content. It's called the vlog, mm -hmm. Clemson football, the vlog. Um, and a big premise behind that is to like have characters just like mm -hmm. on a TV show. Like yeah. we have characters and we, we allow them to, to tell their stories. And so, for us, it's very it's a very similar strategy that we have and and that that we find and and I told you I think I, I tweeted about it you know it's super engaging like True. and a dynamic way to do it to to Zach's point like I think you all had a Ronin and you were like circling mm -hmm. Sammy and like yeah. it was a dan yeah. a dynamic way to have a host like yeah. a traditional host and I think that that's that's what what's important is like if it's dynamic and engaging then then. Yeah. I, I think that that is the, the critical part of it. The reason why we go like vlog, like put mm -hmm. the camera in their hands and let them vlog is because mm -hmm. of that. Like we want it to yep. be an engaging personal thing. Um, and so for me, I think that's a critical thing. Like it, as long as it's uh, natural and engaging and works yeah. on social, uh, I yeah. think, I think it's, it's a positive thing. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I resonate with that. And that's what we kept saying was what's going to keep people's attention because we're losing so many people because they don't care about the other 11 teams. We're losing so many people. What can we do to create better attention and engagement? Okay. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, I promise I wasn't fishing for co compliments. I really wanted to know, does it work or not? Um, thank you both for your time. You do incredible work. You can find links to both Zach and Tyson in our show notes. Um, Tessa is about to tell you all about those. You can check them out. Make sure you not only follow them on social, on YouTube, wherever they are on the internet, but go follow what they're doing in college sports. It is absolutely some of the best work on the planet. And I'm kind of partial to college sports because I think it's a little more creative. Uh, sometimes pro gets a little too corporate, in my opinion, but you guys are doing an incredible job. So Zach, Tyson, thank you so much. Thank you both. Thank you guys. Thanks Bye. guys. Thank you so much for joining us this week on Reverb Roundtable. Don't forget to grab the show notes for the episode. They are full of great info, links to all the content we talked about, and some pretty great gifts just to spice them up. Just go to rvrb.cc forward slash podcast. We'll see you next week on Reverb Roundtable.